I'm in Hunslet, just a stone's throw from Leeds Bridge. And if you walk past this car park, you could very easily miss this blue plaque on the wall. It commemorates Joshua Tetley, who in 1822 bought a brewing business on this site from William Sykes, who'd been here since 1792. And the plaque states that Joshua's enterprise and fine quality ales created a reputation for which over 150 years has made the name Tetley's synonymous with the city of Leeds. In actual fact, the Tetley name represents one of the oldest brewing dynasties in Leeds and has been an integral part of the city for almost 200 years. What Tetley began here in 1822 by leasing a property for £400 became the biggest brewer in Leeds and at one time the largest brewer of beers anywhere in the world. What was so interesting about this place for Tetley was that it sat on top of an artesian well which provided water for brewing the beer. A former Tetley employee once told me that Originally, the beer was made entirely using this spring water, but then over the years, the percentage was reduced, presumably because the demand was increasing. And many people believe that it was this water that gave Tetley beer the unique taste it always had. In 1931, this Art Deco building was built as the headquarters of the Tetley brewing business. What followed was a series of acquisitions of other brewers. In 1954, Gilmore's in Sheffield, along with 500 pubs, and then in 1960, the Leeds Melbourne brewery business. By then, Tetley was not only the biggest brewer in Leeds, but in the north of England too. A series of mergers followed to form Allied Breweries, which at the time was the biggest brewing conglomerate anywhere in the world, with a thousand employees on this site alone. In the 1970s, Tetley owned half of the pubs in Leeds and was brewing more than a million barrels of cask ales each year. A merger with J Lyons formed Allied Lyons, and a combination of great products and great marketing kept the company motoring through the 80s and the 90s. Then, Danish brewer Carlsberg bought a 50% stake, eventually taking over the whole lot and dropping the Tetley name. The last beer to be brewed on this site was made on the 22nd of February 2011, but even though production moved, the so-called Yorkshire Square method is still used to produce the beers today. This 200-year-old process uses Welsh slate containers for brewing, which takes six days, and then a mellowing process, which takes place in the cask, hence the phrase cask conditioned. I'm in Hunslet, outside the building built in 1831 as the headquarters for Tetley's, the biggest brewery in Leeds, and at one time in the whole world. Now, since the brewers moved out, this building has been turned into something much more interesting. Let's go in and have a look. This is the Tetley. There's a bar, there's a restaurant, but there's a lot more to this place than food and drink. The Tetley is a contemporary art centre, and to tell me all about it, I'm joined by Bryony Bond, who's creative director here. Hi, Bryony. Hi, Jonathan. So, what exactly is the Tetley? So, the Tetley is a contemporary art centre in an extraordinary, unique heritage building. And what sort of art is shown here? So we show work by contemporary artists, so artists who are alive and making work today, predominantly. And we show work by artists who are at early stages in their careers, so perhaps this is the first time they've shown in a public space, maybe shown in such a scale as this. Amazing. Now, it says on the wall outside that it's also a learning centre. Yep. What could you learn here? <laughs> well, all sorts. So we do lots of work with school, uh, school children and communities. So we have an after-school club that meets uh, every Wednesday, straight after school, and they make work in response to the exhibitions that we have, teach children about all sorts of skills, from drawing to animation, filmmaking. 
Um, and then we have all sorts of opportunities for adults to get involved. So artists often give talks or give performances. So you can come along, have a pint of Tetley's and maybe see a performance. So something for everybody. Now, what does it cost to get in here? Oh, that's the best thing, Jonathan. It's totally free. <laughs> Absolutely free. So get on down <laughs> to the Tetley. What, what else goes on here? So, um, well, we're predominantly about supporting artists, but we also have a bar and kitchen downstairs, and we look after the heritage collection of the Tetley. So we have some of the original kind of uh, bottles that were produced here, coasters, lots of photographs from the brewery as well. But we also kind of support all sorts of activity. So anything from music to um, yeah, performance. So over the next couple of weeks, we're gonna be celebrating our third birthday. So we'll be having a big party with music and performance throughout the spaces here. And the Tetley story is such an amazing story and you're carrying on the heritage, which is tremendous. Bryony, thank you very much. Thank you, Jonathan. So much of this building is still intact, just like it was when the world's biggest brewery was run from here. This is the boardroom. Here is where Big decisions will have been made about literally millions and millions of pints of beer. But now you can rent it for a meeting or an event. The Tetley now is an art gallery, it's a learning centre, an event space, a bar and a restaurant. But it sits on a big development site which will soon have housing, offices, hotels, shops, bars and restaurants and also a city park with the Tetley as its focal point. Now, there's one more thing I need to do before I leave. This is Jonathan Strait for the Lowdown Leads. Cheers.